They say that when the fig tree blooms, you know that summer is near. Well, as you can see, lots of trees around here are blooming and budding. So summer's not far away. And this is my garden. I've got three long beds. They're about three feet wide. Any bigger than that makes it hard to work around. And they're 72 feet long. And today, I'm going to put some plants in the ground, finally. The weather was rainy. I finally got a chance in between the raindrops to do some weeding. I got all my old mulch off of the ground and I'm ready to go. I've got my manure here in the wheelbarrow. I got a bag of chopped up leaves from mulch. I'll explain those cups there in a second. I've got some liquid fertilizer, my plants, everything ready to go. Got some measuring devices out here. And I've got something that's really indispensable is this cart. It's got a lid on it. You can put tools in it and it's a good place to sit down while you're working. All right, well, let's get started. I want to show you how to put your seedlings in. These are the seedlings I've had growing for about four weeks now. And they're doing pretty good. Uh, some of them, not so good. I'm going to save those for later. But... Um, I got these cups, I've got things marked out. Whether or not you use a um, yardstick like this or a tape measure, one indispensable tool that you'll always have with you is your hand. And what I do is I measure the distance between the span of my fingers. That's 10 inches right there. So if I need to plant something 10 inches apart, I can use my hand to measure. Across here is about six inches. So again, I can use my hand to measure with. And uh, in fact, the, as far as planting depth is concerned, that's one inch up to my first knuckle. So it comes in handy. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I've got this marked out here with this ring. I'll show you what that's for in a second. And I'm gonna knock a plant out. These little six packs, uh, packs are handy. And that'll come right out real easy. That's a good looking seedling. Now, when you plant, you'll see these are kind of leggy. The stems up above the dirt quite a bit. I want to plant this right up to where the leaves begin, right there. This is the primary leaf. That was the first leaf to come out. These are the adult leaves, or true leaves they call them. But I want to plant right up to there. And I've got this already marked out. Go ahead and take my trowel, drop it in there. You can be a little rough with them, it's okay. As long as you don't snap them, you're good to go. All right. That one's in the ground. Move on to the next. Now, in this pack, there are two seedlings growing in it. That one's kind of puny. I might say that, I might not. Let's see how easily I can get them apart. If it really starts to pull, I'm going to stop and abandon that little seedling. And, okay. I'm, uh, I might plant that, but I think I'm going to save that for later, just in case I get one of these that fail. These two I'm also going to save for later. Alright. Take the ring. And stick it in the dirt. Get rid of the weeds. Man, I had a lot of weeds, but I'm glad the rain stopped so I could get rid of them. Okay, now, young seedlings like this, they've been kept in a nursery or uh, somewhere safe, and uh, they're pretty susceptible to what's called the cutworm. It's this little worm that crawls across the ground, usually attacks at night, but a physical barrier will keep that worm away from this plant. It'll, uh, you'll come out in the morning and you'll see one of your plants that looks like somebody took a pair of scissors and cut it down. So those little lumberjacks, they don't like to crawl over anything. So I've got these little rings, they're made out of PVC pipe. You can make them out of cardboard, I've got one here. And it'll do the same thing, you just slip it over the plant and bury it in the ground, about an inch, and you're good to go. But uh, I like these because they don't blow away. 
they're pretty stout and I found some pipe on a construction site so I used that and that's pretty much it uh, just get the seedlings in the ground I'll show you here in a minute uh, what's what to do next but I'm gonna go ahead and get these all in the ground All right, now that I have those planted in the ground, what I want to do is put a, some soil amendments on here. This is cow manure. This is old. This is from last year. If it were fresh, I'd keep it away from the plants, but if that's all I had, that's what I would use. I'll put a couple of shovelfuls next to each plant. And I'm going to take a hoe and just kind of Spread it around, the roots will eventually get to it, the rainwater will wash it in, and then they should be good to go. I've limed the soil before it rained, so I've got my lime in there. And uh, the next thing to do is to put some mulch on there. Before that, that you might not think about this time of year, that's water. But it gets dry and hot in the summer around here, so. I'm going to put this soaker hose in there. It's just a perforated hose. You can get it at your local garden center. And uh, set that in there so that's good to go. Now I'm going to put my mulch on top of that. This allows me to water the garden by, with a turn of a valve and the mulch on top will protect it from the sun. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the rest of the manure and lay out the hose and then do the mulch. Okay, now that I've got all the plants in and I've got my manure down, I've got my soaker hose in place for watering for later, uh, I want to put on the mulch to keep the weeds down and keep the ground moist. The, we've got a lot of rain so it's very muddy, but I'm going to go ahead and put my mulch down now because I need to keep the weeds down. If you find yourself short on mulch, you can use newspaper. I've got a piece here to show you, but I've got some chopped leaves. I'm just going to take these leaves, push them right out to the edge. Put about three inches on here. And just put them around the plants. Spread it out. Now later on I'm going to get some grass clippings. I need to cut the grass today. and I'm going to sprinkle those grass clippings on top of here. Like I said, if you run short on mulch, you can use newspaper and then just weigh it down with the mulch. Keep in mind that you've got to get that mulch right out to the edge because the wind will catch this paper and blow it right off. Or you can weigh it down with rocks like I did here, but I did that temporarily because I don't want rocks in my garden, so I'm going to take those out. And uh, you can put the mulch on this a little thinner. Um, the rainwater will shed off of this for the first couple of rains, but eventually it'll start to break down. Um, if you can get them, get the leaves and the grass clippings. That's the best way to go. Okay, and then I'm just going to go ahead and do this whole bit. Now that I've got my seedlings in the ground, got my soaker hose down for watering, I want to give these seedlings a head start. And what I've done is mix up the liquid fertilizer. This is called fish emulsion. It is, uh, it smells awful. And uh, that's because it's emulsified fish. But it's a great fertilizer for any time of the year. And I'm just going to give these seedlings a little drink to give them a head start until they get big enough that they can reach out to that manure. Just follow the instructions on the bottle. There's a variety of fish emulsions out there. I'm going to put some grass clippings on here and then I'm going to uh, put a wire cage over the top of these because in this area I've got 200 pound rats. They're also known as white-tailed deer. And they will come in here tonight and they will just eat everything. So I need to protect them. I'll show you how I do that here in a little bit. Well, I've got all my broccoli plants in. I've got 52 of them in. I've got some left over, and I'm going to save these because if I have a failure, I've got something to back it up. 
I'll give these a drink of that transparent solution, the um, fish emulsion, and keep them going until I'm satisfied that I'm not going to lose any of these. I've got a couple of um, insect control systems here, two sprayers, both of them are battery operated, and uh, I use uh, the natural insect control chem uh, products. It's not really the chemicals. One of them is made out of uh, crushed up uh, chrysanthemum flowers, actually. But I prefer the more natural methods. Okay, so I've got the leaves down. Man, the worms are going to love that. And now I'm going to sprinkle some grass clippings. I just cut the grass. I'm going to sprinkle these around. And these will help hold the leaves in place. You can use this for mulch also, and there just never seems to be an, end, an endless, there just seems to be an endless supply of grass clippings. Now, another pest that I have around here is what I mentioned earlier, the white-tailed deer. They will come in here tonight and just ravish this garden if I don't protect them. So I've got this fencing. Uh, some people call it dog wire fencing. They're two inches by four inches and I just fold a piece and set it on there like that and that keeps the deer from getting to the plants and that's it. All I have to do now is water, watch for insects. If I see an a infestation, get out the sprayers and spray them. Uh, there's some other things you can use on your plants to protect them from insects. But from here on, it's just water and watch them grow. So get out there and get them planted.